Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 4.7, Growth and Decay. Okay, so we're going to start out with an example that's pretty common to our real lives. Tanya went to a sale and she bought a shirt that's originally $30 for 15% off. So we want to know what the discounted price was and then how much she pays after tax. So usually you do this this way. You'd say, okay, my discount is going to be 30 times 0 0.15. If you type that into your calculator, you're going to get 4.5. And so her discounted price is going to be 30 minus 4.5. This is basic grade 9 stuff, I think. 25.5. And then we want to know what the tax is, and in Ontario right now it's 13%, so we put 0 0.13 times the new price, 25.5, which is 3.32, um, according to my calculator. And of course we want to round off to the hundredth, because we're in cents, so, uh, you know, you can't, you, you pay 32 cents there. Everyone knows that, okay? And, uh, oop, I just changed color by accident. <laughs> and we just add that to 25.5, right? And that gives us 28.82. And that would be the price after tax. Okay, so we can do it this way, or we could think of it in a different way. You can think of it at like this, 30 minus 4.5. This is like doing 30 minus 30 times 0 0.15. Or in other words, if I come and factor that, I'm going to get 30 times 1 minus 0 0.15. Right? So I'm actually doing um, a subtraction off of 1, 100%. So let's do the next one. Tanya goes to sale, and now she's buying a shirt for X dollars. Uh, for I percent off. So we want to know what the discount is. So her discount is going to be um, a th X, which is the original amount, times 1 minus I over 100, which is how we convert to decimals uh, from percent. And that would be our discounted price, right? So we could do that with uh, very abstractly with all variables. Um, and then after tax, so We'll just add the after tax. Because we're adding on to the tax, we're going to go 1 plus 0 0.13, right? And that's the price that she's going to pay after the tax. X times 1 minus I over 100 times 1.13. If she sold the shirt for another I percent off, how much did sh that person spend? So the second person is going to spend this original amount times 1 minus I over 100, which is because you know, they get this additional this additional discount. So we're copying over, I'm just simplifying it. So this goes down to here and we want to multiply by another one minus I over hundred because that's the discount that that person is getting. And you can see that this is actually going to simplify to be one point one three X times one minus I over one hundred squared because I'm doing it twice. Now the last part of this question asks us if the pattern continues the nth person receives the shirt for I percent off. Um, what the previous person spent, how much does the nth person buy it for? So we're multiplying I, 1 minus I over 100 times 1 minus I over 100 times 1 minus I over 100. And you can see that for the second person, I've got it 2 times. So for the nth person, I must be multiplying it n times. So it's 1.13x times 1 minus I over 100. And this is going to happen n times. So I'll just write it like this. Well, where we have this 1 minus i over 100. We're just going to do that n times. And that ends up simplifying to 1.13x times 1 minus i over 100 to the n. So they get, this gives us a nice general formula for finding decay. Um, so let's talk about that formula. Well, first of all, there's growth versus decay. You know when we're doing the tax, we're adding on, so we did a 1 plus whatever the percentage is, and that's growth. And when we're decaying, like we're getting a discount or whatever, um, we're doing 1 minus whatever the percentage. So that's the difference between growth and decay. And um, so we can write a general formula for that. It's going to be A equals A naught times 1 plus I to the n. And in this case, we're going to have a be the amount after the growth. a naught is the initial amount. n is the number of cycles that we go through. 
and um, so uh, 1 plus i is what we actually call the growth factor, the growth factor, and the growth rate itself is i. So i, actually I'm going to do that in blue right here, i is the growth rate, so that's the percentage. Okay, so if we're talking about taxes, 13% is the growth rate, 0 0.13 is the growth rate, and 1.13, that's called the growth factor. And we can do that with decay as well, so it's the same thing, A equals A naught times 1 minus I to the N, and that's going to be decay, and those all stand for the same things as in growth. So A is the amount, A naught initial amount, N is the number of cycles, which I spelled wrong, and um, 1 plus i, or 1 minus i, decay rate factor, and i is the decay rate. So let's talk about this one. A 200 gram sample of radioactive polonium-210 has a half-life of 138 days. That means that every 138 days, the amount of polonium left in a sample is half of the original amount. So if you think about that, then it, if it's half, that means it's, you know, 50%. Right, so what I'm really doing is I'm going to go, okay, A equals A naught times 1 minus 0 0.5 to the number of cycles. Um, and I'm not sure what the number of cycles is, right? So that's the question. For A, you can see I'm determining the amount after 138 days. So I know that A naught is the initial value, so actually I'm just going to write that in there as my initial value, 200. And after 130 days, it's a, it says that, that it's going to be ha exactly half the amount. So that means that that's one cycle, isn't it? So I'm going to just write one in there, because um, it's one cycle, so we're going half of it. And it makes sense, because we expect that after 138 um, days, I have 200 times a half, which is 100. OK, so that's for A. 100 grams. Um, now the question is for B, how do we figure out how many cycles there are in 100 days? Well, to figure out how many cycles there are, we actually just have to do 100 over 138, right? And that's the number of cycles that we would go through. So we're going to use that formula again. We're using A equals A naught, which is 200, times 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.5, to the 100 over 138. And you just type it into your calculator, and you should get 121.0, and I rounded that off. So if you type this into your calculator and you don't get this number, then you might have done something wrong. Like um, you need to make sure that you put 100 over 138 into brackets before you do the exponent. So you might want to just pause the video right now and make sure that you get that on your calculator. Okay. All right, I'm going to assume you did that and do C. C is A equals, and again, we're going to just plug the same numbers in, and now I've got five years, and you'll notice that this is in a different unit, so I have to make sure that I'm in the same unit, so I'm actually going to do five times 365 over 138, so that both of these are in days, and then you can just type that into your calculator. I'm not going to do that. You can just figure it out on your own. And D, Determine the amount after n days. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill this all in. A equals 200, that's the initial amount, times 0 0.5 over uh, to the n over 138. That's how many cycles it's going to be. And um, obviously I don't have n, so I can evaluate it. But that will be our formula. So no matter how many days I had, I could figure it out based on this formula right here. Right? Okay. So using this formula, I can try to solve E. E says, how long does it take for this 200 gram sample to decay to 110 uh, grams? And um, so I'm going to fill that in, E. Um, so uh, 110 is the final amount, so I'll fi fill it in for A. 110 equals 200 times 0 0.5 to the N over 138. And so we can start to isolate it. You can move this over. So we divide 110 divided by 200 gives us 0 0.55 equals 0 0.5 to the n over 138. 
Now you might know that we could use logarithms to do this, but um, for grade 10 all we know is that we can use guess and check, and that's the only real approved method. We might talk about logarithms a little bit later in the course, but for now we're going to use guess and check, and that, yes, this is like the only one time that I'm going to let you use guess and check, so you might as well enjoy it. So um, we can see 0 0.55 is really close to 0 0.5, but I still have a little bit more than half, so I'm going to do a little bit less than 138. So you can check, like, let's try n equals 130. So you plug that into 0 0.5 to the n to 130 over 138, you're going to get it's about 0 0.52. And so I know I have to get a little bit higher, but still less than 138, and you just go forth until you get to 0 0.55. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, and that's how we would solve it, using guess and check. So the next example asks us to write a half-life formula for initial amount a naught if the half-life is h and the time is t. So we're going to actually apply what we just learned, right? Because we know that the, okay, well, we'll let a be the amount, and a naught is our initial amount. And we're multiplying by 1 minus 0 0.5, because that's the decay rate is a half, so that ends up being one half. And then we want to know the number of cycles. So the number of cycles is the time divided by the half-life. At least that's what we figured out here. You can see we had n, the number of days, over how frequently it halves. So that's n or h over t. Oh, sorry, wrong. That's t over h. So this is our half-life formula. And this is actually something that you should memorize. Um, I think we talked about it in grade 10, but if you don't remember it, then you need to m now memorize it. Right here, memorize me. Um, a equals a naught times one half to the t over h, and that's a very important formula that will be pretty useful in your future. And then part b, it says write a formula for initial amount a naught uh, with a doubling time of h and time t. So now we're talking about doubling instead of halving. And th the big difference here is just, again, the growth factor. So instead of having a decay factor, we're going to have a growth factor. And it's a naught times 2 to the t over h. So where we're doubling, we write a 2 here. If I was saying tripling, then I'd have a 3 here. If I was quadrupling, I'd write a 4 here, and so forth. So that is how we use this formula. So the half-life doesn't just apply to half-life. It actually works for a variety of different types of problems. And that is it. So I hope that you enjoyed this class, and I will see you later.